healthcare workers, we perform many tasks which cause stress to our bodies. Whether we push carts or paper, lift boxes or people, we face ergonomic challenges, the very real possibility of injury due to strain. In fact, thousands of workers in Ontario are injured every year, costing their employers millions of dollars. Workers bear the human costs, pain, disruption in their family lives, and loss of income. But ergonomics also brings us good news. For every challenge, every problem, there is a fitting solution. A suitable chair can help support your back. Redesigning a workstation will reduce repetitive stretching. And training offers us better, healthier work habits. To prevent workplace injuries, we have to make ergonomics, the science of fitting the job to the worker, part of our work mentality. In short, learn about ergonomics and apply what we learn. Understanding begins with the fundamental risk factors in ergonomics. Awkward posture, excessive repetition, and excessive force. So after working eight hours, or maybe even longer sometimes, I do get achy and stiff, particularly in my, my front deltoid here. I feel it because I'm holding my right arm sometimes and my wrist, and particularly my thumb area. I find I use my thumb probably more than I should. What I have done for my elbow is I've had a sponge cut out here. And you don't need a sponge. You could roll up towels and I rest my elbow on it. For my wrist, what I've done is I've gotten a cutout, had a mattress made in a cutout. A full ergonomic analysis resulted in other changes to her workstation, including a desk at standing height and an anti-fatigue carpet. This machine has an adjustable keyboard and adjustable monitor, so you don't have to strain your neck, and also you can have your arms in proper alignment. I have had a pain in the past with my shoulder and my wrist and my back, so I'm very aware of body mechanics when I'm working. Since I've made a lot of these changes, I have seen a big improvement. Healthcare workers of all kinds have to be conscious of their posture, as a dental hygienist explains. Uh, one of the best ways to avoid neck and shoulder strain in uh, this job is to always make sure that your posture is 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 perfect that your back is straight feet are on the ground and that you're moving your body to the patient but more important is that you have the patient come to you so that you're not leaning over to the patient and stretching your back out in this manner part of the answer is good equipment which minimizes the strain one of the best things we have right now to help hygienists avoid uh, job-related stresses, especially with the wrist, is a cavatron or an ultrasonic debrider. So what it does is it works by oscillating a tip and does a great job at cleaning the teeth without putting any stress and strain on the wrist. Reducing ergonomic stress, for example, preparing medications under a hood, often requires action from the employer and the worker. You can't rest your elbows on the grill, and you're holding your syringes up and your elbows up, and your wrists tend to get tired, and then you can't cover the hub of the syringe, so you're using your finger and your thumb. I have to come out and I'm stretching my hands, my fingers, and I'm massaging my thumb. And uh, actually, I loosen my wrist too because I find that hurts in there too. And sometimes my shoulder hurts. So again, you're massaging, you're stretching. The bar in the hood was farther back, and we used to hang bags on the bar and to inject the drugs in it. So we had asked maintenance to move the bar a bit forward so we don't have to be reaching as far in. Can I just see your arm? All right. When taking blood, beds should be raised to an ideal working height, but often aren't okay. due to time so pressure. Try this tourniquet around your arm. Mm -hmm. I guess some of the things that the workers could do, and one of the workers uh, mentioned it today when we were speaking with her, was uh, wearing uh, good shoes. Uh, helps with the, the standing part of it. Um, also to being aware of their body mechanics when they are uh, taking the blood Relaxing. and trying as much as possible to, uh, to minimize the bending that, that is involved. Often, in a daycare for example, the three major issues, posture, 
repetition and force are rolled into one. What we need to do is minimize the amount of reaching and lifting over the tables by if a child is on the other side and needs help, then you actually walk around. You don't reach over because again, we want to prevent any injuries from happening. Equipment design is also part of the equation because of its impact on posture and strain. Basically, I work with a machine that has a rotating sort of a turn that I have to um, advance tissue with it. I cut tissue with it. And it also has a lock on it, which I have to, for my own safety, have to lock. Because of it, I've already got a, uh, an injury that I've had surgery on my thumb. And you do this motion probably around 2,000 times a day, and you do it for 30 years. And that's caused quite a severe problem in my neck and my shoulder. So now what they're looking at is they've got a machine that does all that sort of for me. So it goes up and down so I don't have to turn it. Working at the microscope can be tiring and stressful if you don't break the activity with um, other things. Occasionally my neck may ache and that would probably be mostly related to chair position. If my chair is too high and I'm looking down into the microscope, uh, occasionally I may experience cramps um, maybe down the back of my thighs and that's again related to chair position. At this point they're looking at a, a redesign of the, the lab and that's a, a prime opportunity for ergonomics to be incorporated in the, uh, in the design of the setup. Uh, one thing they could look at for this area in general is uh, having it more in a U-shaped so that the workers wouldn't necessarily have to walk the full length of the area. Also with the blood gas analyzers, uh, bringing them up to a, a higher level so that uh, workers wouldn't have to bend over when they're working with them. Repetitive strain occurs in a wide variety of jobs, from administration to the pharmacy, to housekeeping and food services. Competition gets to us, maybe in two years, or it could take two decades. To avoid strain and injury requires analysis and action. The problem I have identified here today is the lady pushing the cart uh, toward the door. The door are not automatic, so she has to push uh, the heavy door plus the cart. Uh, there's also the serving lady who has to twist and bend and, 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 and move around because of the close quarters and the things are set up so that she has to twist around to get the food. And there's also the lady who has to stretch to get the cups off the tray because of the height of the tray. When they redesign this working station, I would like for them to reduce the risk of having strain. Uh, with the muscles and everything, that the people don't have to stretch so much, they don't have to twist or bend as much so that they minimize the, the risk factors in the setting. Redesign, rethinking, that's what it's all about. Take, for example, back and shoulder injuries caused by wet mopping. We identified that the primary cause of these problems was the traditional mop bucket uh, ringer system for floor cleaning which caused a lot of uh, the back and forth movement, uh, caused a lot of strain uh, in the shoulders and the, w the weight of the actual bucket itself uh, contributed to the back, uh, back injuries. We did uh, quite a bit of research and we found a dry cleaning uh, mopping system which uh, is very light for the staff and it's very effective uh, at keeping the uh, environment uh, clean uh, for our patients. Innovation isn't easy. Winning support for the dry mop system and lighter adjustable carts required two years of meetings and cost benefit reports. But the bottom line is fewer injuries. Our major challenge uh, getting our material from our central building to our new long-term care center was the route that the material has to traverse. We are talking of sharp turns, low grades of, to, to climb and also to descend. And this would be a major factor in us choosing the tow motor to move the, those materials. In the past, we have uh, suffered a number of uh, incidents with staff with back, lower back injuries regarding putting stress on, the, on them, uh, traversing grades 
and also uh, going up grades. And this was a major issue uh, for us, and this was another factor in us choosing a tow motor option. This is a situation where I believe that the safety of the staff and the cost savings for the facility are went hand in hand together and proved a win-win situation for us. The most common source of strain in healthcare is lifting. Whether we're pushing carts, lifting people, or moving dozens of boxes day after day. What's needed is a strategy to avoid strain. Acquire and use appropriate equipment to lift pallets or people. And most important, learn to lift properly. We want to get down to a level where we can comfortably lift with our legs. So we don't want to be bending over to get something. We want to be lowering ourselves to a level where we can reach it comfortably. We all know about, you know, lift with your legs and keep your feet apart and bring, the, you know, bring what you're lifting close to your body. Don't twist. We've heard these things before, but unfortunately they're not practiced. And if they're not practiced and they don't become habitual, then they're no good to us. Okay. And now to please roll over towards me. One, two, three. When you're lifting a patient or resident, communication encourages no. cooperation. Et un, deux, trois, on se lève. Debout grand, grand. Transferring or lifting someone requires thought and planning. Good. An assessment may determine that the lift requires one, okay. two, or more workers. The sensible solution, protecting both workers and clients, is mechanical lifting devices. I just take his legs and just swing them around, watching for my overhead. I'll just slide him across and call Caregivers must be well trained and familiar with the assessment process. If you look at the back, the muscles in the back are very small, about the size of my finger. So obviously they're not meant to take a lot of weight. Are we better off using our stomach muscles to lift rather than the back? Your stomach muscles and the back muscles are used to stabilize the spine. So when you're actually doing a lift, you're going to pull those muscles in. They act like a lifter's belt to stabilize that area of the spine so you're less likely to cause injury. To ensure a safe transfer and to protect your back, you're going to make sure that the bed is at a good height. We're going to ask the patient to do as much as she can with our assistance. And we're going to use the muscles in our legs. And we're going to tighten up our tummy muscles to keep our back in a good position, maintain those curves, and transfer our weight from the back leg forwards as we assist the patient into the chair. Oops. And Debbie, I don't want you to pull on to me, but on three, you're going to stand. One, two, three, up. Reach to the chair, turn, and down you go. If a client is light, cooperative, and able to assist, a single person transfer is fine. Let me just get this seat In home care, now. the worker is generally alone, so she okay, must protect ready? herself by adhering to the cool. results of the client handling assessment. A supervisor will come into the client's home, assess the situation, and then we are told then we are going to a new client this that this is a um, two-person lift, it's a machine is there, a Hoyer lift. And many times they will say, okay, this client is able to stand. This client is able to help you. Sometimes our workers have to say no. It's important for the health and safety, both for the worker and for the client. They have to know that they have the support of their supervisors and the whole organization that they're working okay. for to be able good. to say no. Like always. In group homes and many other facilities, basic equipment can reduce strain. I'm going to help you back. We have um, a zinc, it's more suitable for clients in a wheelchair. We have a grab bar. We have a tracking for clients' lift. We have the back bench to help us support the client in the top. There you go. 